All over the world, from ancient texts to oral traditions, there are accounts of an advanced race known as giants. It is thought that these giants were hybrid species created by a civilization that existed before the last great flood, about 11,500 years ago. But is there any evidence of their existence? And is it possible that there are giants living among us now? We will try to find out together in the new episode of Secret Origins. Welcome! European folklorists rich with stories of giants fighting and building monumental stone structures. Legends of giants can be found in all cultures and eras. It is crucial to re-examine the evidence with an open mind. The mainstream academic community claims that giants, cyclops and other similar creatures are mere myths and that bones believed to be giants' bones are actually those of prehistoric animals. This is the commonly accepted stance when discussing ancient giants, but it appears there may be more to the story than many are willing to acknowledge. We will first take a look at the Bible and see if it tells us anything about giants. In the time after the Great Flood, the Bible tells of a 36 tribes of giants fighting for control of the Holy Land. These giant tribes were the descendants of the Nephilim, beings created from a cross between the fallen angels, also described in the Book of Enoch as the Watchers and Human Women. In an attempt to destroy the deeds done by the Watchers, the gods sent a flood to restore human civilization. However, some of the Nephilim survived. One of these giant tribes that survived the flood was the Amalekites, who originated in the southern Arabia before migrating to modern Israel. Given their role in ancient history, it seems reasonable that the Amalekites had a pure strain of Nephilim DNA running through their giant veins. Number 1328 confirm that the Amalekites were not only ancient but also directly related to the Nephilim, the oldest race of giants that gave birth to the Anakim or sons of Anak. The Emim lived there in past times and people great, numerous and tall like the Anakim, who were also accounted giants as the Anakim but the Moabites called them Emim. That was also regarded as land of giants, giants formerly dwelt there but the Ammonites called them Zamzumim. The Rephaim, also known as Anakites or Aim, were a giant biblical people who lived during the time of Abraham. They inhabited both Palestine and Moab. The Moabites called them Emimami and the Ammonites called them Zamzumim. They are also referred to as Anakites or the sons of Anak or Enak in the Bible. The prophet Isaiah stated that the Lord had destroyed the Rephaim and erased all memory of them. However, the names of the megalith Wheel of Spirits and the Valley of the Rephaim in Israel remain as a reminder of them. In the 1930s, a collection of giant bones was discovered on Mount Carmel in Israel, but they have since disappeared and attention was directed towards new discoveries of Neanderthal bones. It is possible that the authorities did not want to acknowledge that the bones could have belonged to the Nephilim or one of their descendants. Despite this, the Bible lists 22 giants by name, including Arba, Oak, Bielasat, Ogias, Gog, Magog, Gog Magog, and most of these giants were rulers and kings. Perhaps the most famous ancient giant from the Bible is the legendary Goliath. In Kings 17.4 it is said, A champion named Goliath who was from Gath came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armor of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. 
The story of David and Goliath, while now primarily seen as a children's tale, was once considered to be based on historical events. Another ancient giant is the legendary Gilgamesh, considered the first hero of the ancient world and the historical builder and ruler of the city of Uruk nearly 5000 years ago. The poem that tells his story is the Epic of Gilgamesh is the oldest known epic poem in existence and also includes a flood myth almost identical to the one found in the Bible thousands of years later. Gilgamesh was the son of the goddess Ninsun and the king priest Lugul Banda. He ruled for 126 years and had superhuman strength. In the epic, Gilgamesh is described as famous for his great stature and surpassing all other kings. And on clay tablets, he is depicted as an extremely tall man holding a lion in his hand. If we compare the length of the lion to the height of the depicted Gilgamesh, he should be about 5 meters tall. Mysterious monuments and tales of giants can be found in ancient Egypt as well as depicted in hieroglyphs on the walls of ancient temples. Some of the pharaoh's depictions show a significant difference in height compared to the normal people, suggesting the possibility of giants rather than artistic expression. In 1881, Professor Timmerman discovered a series of tombs containing the remains of a prehistoric race of giants while examining the ruins of an ancient temple of Isis on the banks of the Nile, 16 miles below Najjar Jafar. The smallest skeleton found was 7 feet 8 inches long, while the largest was 11 feet 1 inch or about 310 centimeters. In 2001, Howard University archaeologists excavated the Giza Mulhern giant skeleton from a tomb in Cemetery 2500 in western Giza. The skeleton measured 6.5 feet, but its skull and jawbone were unusually large, leading mainstream academia to declare it as the first known case in ancient Egypt about giants. However, the skull was kept hidden from the academia and the remaining bones were quickly covered up. Additionally, hundreds of giant sarcophagi were discovered, but they were empty. The possibility of giants existing could explain how some of the massive megalith structures around the world were built as they currently have no known explanation for how they were moved. One example of a massive megalith structure that could have been built by giants is the southern stone in Baalbek, Lebanon, which weighs a staggering 1,242 tons. In southern Siberia, researchers have found a massive wall of granite stones on Mount Sharia. Some of these giant granite boulders are estimated to weigh over 3,000 tons, which is more than twice the weight of those in Lebanon, raising questions about how they were arranged. It's noteworthy that the original name of Stonehenge was the Ring of the Giants. Stonehenge is a later Saxon name meaning hanging stones. In Syria, at the ancient temple of Ain Dara, Several large footprints measuring 3 feet in length can be found in the courtyard leading to the shrine of the temple. These footprints suggest the existence of a giant who was at least 4-6 meters tall. In 2005, a group of Russian scientists led by Professor Ernst Moldoshev announced that they had found numerous graves of giants near the site of the giant's footprints in Ain Dara, as well as throughout Syria. However, due to various reasons such as political and ideological, they were unable to excavate them. Giants are also part of Celtic, Greek, Roman, Hindu, Buddhist, Scandinavian and Japanese folklore. Irish mythology is rich with stories of giants such as the legend of the giant seafaring Fomorians and their leader Balor. According to the legend, they came to Irish shores after surviving the Great Flood. The origins of Balor and his Fomorians is unknown, but some scholars suggest they may have originated from Atlantis.
The ancient British lands of England, Scotland and Wales are home to numerous megalithic monuments with legends claiming they were built by survivors of Atlantis. Ancient Britain was even known as Albion, named after one of the giant kings of Atlantis. It's possible that Atlantis was part of Ireland at some point in prehistory. Some scientists theorize that an Irish Atlantis was submerged by a flood caused by a rock comet which caused Earth's crust to shift. The surviving Atlantean giants may have then been responsible for the structures found in Europe and beyond. As the exploration of the coast of America began, Spanish navigators also reported sightings of living giants. During their expeditions to the Americas, three Spanish ship captains as well as Sir Francis Drake and Captain John Smith reported encountering beings that taller than the native population. Here is what Captain John Smith writes about them. Upon this river inhabit a people called Susquehannock. Sixty of them came to the discoverers, with skins, bows, arrows, targets, beads, swords and tobacco pipes for presents. Such great and well-proportioned men are seldom seen, for they seemed like giants to the English. In 1519, Spanish explorer Alonso Álvarez de Pineda mapped the northern coastline of the Gulf of Mexico, noting various rivers, bays, landmarks and potential harbors. Near where the Mississippi River flows into the Gulf of Mexico, he discovered a large city and around 40 nearby villages. Pineda described the tribes that settled near the river as a race of giants from 10 to 11 palms high and a race of pygmies only 5 or 6 palms high. Perhaps the most well-known and intriguing account of true giants from the age of exploration is from the famous Portuguese explorer Fernando Magellan. Between 1519 and 1522, Magellan embarked on his most famous voyage, an ambitious expedition to search for a good route to the Maluku Islands in the East Indies, which were the key to the strategically important and highly profitable spice trade. The voyage eventually led to the first successful circumnavigation of the globe. Magellan was in command of five ships and when they reached the southern tip of South America, in the distant land of Patagonia, the expedition encountered a puzzling sight. Here is an excerpt from the diary of Antonio Pigafetta, Magellan's official chronicler. Leaving this place, we at least reach 49 and a half degrees to the Antarctic Pole. As it was winter, the ships entered a safe harbor for wintering. We spent two months in this place without seeing anyone, but one day, without anyone expecting it, we saw a giant who was on the shore, quite naked and who danced, leaped and sang while he sang he drew sand and dust on his head. Our captain sent one of his men toward him charging him to leap and sing like the other in order to reassure him and to show him friendship, which he did. Immediately the man of the ship started dancing, led this giant to a small island where the captain awaited him. And when he was before us, he began to marvel and to be afraid, and he raised one finger upward, believing that we came from heaven. And he was so tall that the tallest of us only came up to his waist. He was well proportioned. The captain named the people of this sort Pathagoni. It's important to know that the above account is taken from the journal of the official chronicler of Magellan's voyage of discovery. This is the person tasked with recording and maintaining the most accurate records of events and activities, whether exotic or mundane. This man is responsible not only to the commander of the voyage, but also to the king and the country for his eyewitness accounts as a full, precise and accurate testimony of the events that occurred during the voyage. Given his position and responsibilities, can we trust his testimony about encounters with giants to be accepted as factual information from an impeccable witness?
Some years later, in 1539, an account by Hernando de Soto, another explorer, appeared describing how he came across numerous giants during his travels through the southeastern part of what is now the United States. De Soto set out from Tampa Bay, Florida, with a group of hundreds of men and along his road, he said to have frequently encountered tribes of natives ruled by giants. One of these was Chief Tuscaloosa, who was found in western Alabama and was said to be a towering giant of man who was taller than everyone else. The conquistador Francisco Coronado also recorded meeting entire tribes of giants during his missions through the southwest in search of the legendary El Dorado. In some cases, physical evidence of these giants has been found, as well, reportedly the case with the conquistador Bernal Diaz del Castillo, who served under Hernán Cortés during the Spanish conquest of Mexico. In the pages of his detailed record of the conquest and subsequent collapse of the Aztec Empire, there is a strange account of a race of giants about which the Telescatec Indians claimed once inhabited the area. According to the conquistadors, the native people they encountered told stories passed down from their ancestors about very tall men and women with huge bones who once lived among them. They said these giants were bad people with bad customs, so they fought against them and killed them and those who remained disappeared. To demonstrate how large were giants, the native people brought the conquistadors the leg bone of one giant, which was the height of an ordinary man. The conquistadors were amazed by these bones and believed that there must have been giants in this land. There are still many accounts of real giants fought throughout the Americans during the age of exploration, but they have largely been forgotten over time. However, some evidence of these giants remains in the form of megalith structures and carvings which are literally written in stone. One such example is the giant footprint in South Africa which is considered to be the most spectacular rock footprint ever found on Earth. It was discovered in 1931 by a farmer named Stoffel Katzi while he was hunting. The footprint is around 4 feet suggesting the creature that left it would have been 24 to 27 feet tall. The locals referred to it as the God footprint or Goliath's footprint and there are stories of ancient giants throughout the region. Skeptics argue that the giant footprint was formed by natural erosion but Professor Peter Wagner of the University of Port Elizabeth in South Africa suggests that it's more likely that little green men arrived from space than it was created by natural erosion. Based on the accounts and discoveries listed, it is possible that giants may have existed in the past. During the 19th and early 20th century, in the United States almost every year there were reports of the discovery of ancient giant skeletons in the newspapers. It was not uncommon for people to come across news stories such as a skull of heroic size and unique shape found among the valleys of the Red River. Today, However, no news media mentions anything about ancient giants or bone finds, and if a giant skeleton is found somewhere, it is certainly classified and hidden from the public. Is it possible that somewhere, in some remote place, a species of these enigmatic creatures is still alive, hiding from mankind? We cannot end this episode without mentioning the most famous encounter with giants that didn't happen in ancient times, but in 2002, actually. This event, which is still classified by the US government, was revealed on a popular radio show after witnesses to the event anonymously told their stories. The events took place in 2002 in the deserts of Afghanistan, where a US Army squad went missing and another special operations team was sent to investigate their whereabouts. Upon arrival, the soldiers found an entrance to a large cave surrounded by broken American military equipment and scattered equipment with blood stains. According to the story, the squad was about to enter the cave to search for the missing soldiers when a 13-foot-tall red-haired humanoid 
with double fangs appeared and attacked them. According to witnesses, the giant impaled one of the soldiers with its long spear, killing him on the spot before the rest of the squad managed to take him down by shooting him in the face for 30 seconds. After the giant falls dead, the Tusk Force enters the caves and finds the remains of human bones, leading the military to think the creature is a cannibal. When the incident was reported to headquarters, the giant's body was bagged and loaded into a helicopter and flown to a secret location in the US for examination. The giant weighed about 500 kilograms, according to the team's estimate. He was dressed and shot in animal skins. If there really was a living giant that hid for so many years in the caves of Afghanistan without being discovered, is it possible that he was not the only one of his kind living on this planet? So, is there any evidence of giants living among us today? Some people claim that there are still giant skeletons buried deep in the earth waiting to be discovered and that some of them have been found and kept secret by the government. Others argue that the stories of giants are nothing more than myths and legends. Regardless of what you believe, one thing is for sure. The topic of giants is a fascinating one and there is still so much we don't know about them. Theories about their origin, existence and ultimate fate continue to be debated. It is important to keep an open mind and continue to research and explore all possibilities. We bow before you and thank you for watching another episode of Secret Origins. Keep your minds open and until we meet again.